In this video, we're going to do some more examples with information about functions. You should read the book again, of course. But let's do some more examples. First of all, check to see what's in the notes. We have C programming basics, functions. There's information here about the syntax for making a function and for running a function and what happens. Four things to remember and the possibility of recursion. Let's just go through this with another example. Let's call it more fun. In the document here, there's two different things. One is defining a function, and the second one is running a function. Defining a function is something like this. We'll call this fun. Alright, you define a function by doing this stuff. You have, what does the function return? Name of the function, parentheses, and inside the parentheses, parameters. And then inside curly braces, the function. Down below, we can run the function by having the name of the function and parentheses. This is a function that does not take any parameters and does not have any return value. This function, all it's doing is separating out this code here so that it's on its own. Uh, maybe I could say hello goodbye. A function like this, the point of it is that if you want to call it multiple times, then all you have to do is, if you want to run this code multiple times, you don't have to copy and paste the code, just call the function again. Ask yourself what's going to be the output if I run this. Oh, what did I call it? More fun. We'll just call it F. Hello, goodbye, hello, goodbye. It ran this code twice. Alright, so that's the most basic way to do a function. Void is no return value. Name of the function, parentheses, and then curly braces to define it. This doesn't actually do anything until you're down in main and you call it. Remember the way the program starts is it goes to the beginning of main and starts running right there. I make another function. another function that doesn't do anything very interesting. That function doesn't happen. If I just compile it and run it right now, it'd be exactly the same. All this says to the compiler is, here's a function that could be used. Now, it will be run. Hello, goodbye, blah, blah, hello, goodbye. So if I call it from main, it could happen, or if I call it from another function that runs. The flow of control here is you start at main. When you see fun, you go up to the beginning of fun. You do hello. Now fun can call functions itself. The, anytime you see, anytime you're, the compiler's running and keeping track of what line you're on. It's on this line, it needs to go up here does that and then it needs to do this line so then it'll go up here 
and when the function's done, it remembers where it was. It was right here. The next line is right here. When that function is done, it remembers where it was. It was here. It's in the next line. There's nothing there. And so on. And there's some nice pictures in the book about this. Hello, blah, blah, goodbye. Hello, blah, blah, goodbye. All right, those are functions that is just saving you from having to copy and paste code, and it just keeps your code organized, potentially. Let us do functions that actually return something. Do an average. we want to do, I'll comment these out. So we want to do the average of two numbers. And I'll have two numbers here. A is 1.0. B is 2.0. How do you compute the average? You would do um, say ABG is X plus Y divided by 2.0. Alright, you're in your main. I, these are commented, so those get skipped. <clears throat> Next line is A and B are defined. Next line is C out, and the C out wants to figure out what this is so that it can print it. And when you have a function call, there are two things that happen. One is the execution goes up, the compiler goes up to run the code inside of there. And the other thing that happens is a function can have a value, it can return a value. And if it returns a value, then C out will run the code and then that value will be like sitting right here. You could do something like Something like this. The function runs and whatever value was returned is sitting here and then gets put into x with the equal. Alright, so the first thing about functions is you can have void and you can have parentheses with nothing inside and then there's no parameters, there's no returns, it's just that it goes and runs this code in between curly braces. If you have parameters, then the rule is whatever is here gets copied in to these variables here. These are variables that are declared for the function. So whatever's sitting inside of A will get copied into X up here. And whatever's sitting inside of B will be copied into Y up here. Once those values are copied in, it just runs like normal. If there's a return value, there's a return statement, then whatever is after the return gets sent back. And we had a picture. Let's see. I had this picture that I like. Draw inputs go into the parameter, go into a, so if we have a box function, so here's my function box, and then turn, picture this being drawn on the board. Um, so the flow of x the flow of control is when the function is going to be run. The inputs or parameters get sent in, the function runs, if there's any return value that gets sent back. Here, the return value is whatever this average is. And whatever is after the return has to match up with this double. This first line here is called the function prototype. 
and it tells the compiler how the function would be used. Its name is average. If there's any returns, there'll be double values. And anybody that's calling the function needs to give two double values like this. Okay, so this, if we run this, it should, or should this print, it's doing the average 1.5, and then this should be 1.5 again. What if we do something like average of A and A, A was 1. What if we do something like, and, uh, all right, so the thing you need to remember with a function is it's going to run this code. <clears throat> if there are any parameters here, the values will get copied in. If there's a return, it'll the value that you put for the return will match the type. The type of the thing here matches <clears throat> the type that you said the function was going to be. And then that gets sent back so that it can be used on an equal or see out or in an arithmetic expression. So I could say x equals average a a plus average b b. Anywhere that there could be a variable or a number, you could have a function there. And what happens is it runs the function and then the value would be sitting there. Three was x. The average of one and one is one. The average of two and two is two. One plus two. All right, let's do a function that actually does something useful. I mean, there's, there's two main types of functions. One that computes a value, and one that does something and does input and output. Let's do one that computes a value. Let's say we want to make a function that does power. I'm thinking of doing something like, if you want to compute the value 2 to the 10th power, or you want to compute the value 3 to the 5th power. All right, so 2 to the 10th, that's multiplying 2s together, um, 10 of them. 3 to the 5th is multiplying 5 different 3s together. So the code for that would look like this. One way to do it. You start with total equal to one, <clears throat> and this exponent says how many times you're going to multiply the base. The base would be like three. We're going to multiply three on um, this many times. Uh, this is assuming that the exponent is not negative. That's fine. Alright, so what this does is it takes a base and an exponent and computes the power. Let's try to make sure. The value of 2 to the 10th, you can check it on your calculator, it will be 1024. Three to the fifth, I don't know. Uh, I think actually it's 243. Yeah. Okay, so this would be a function that you would um, define anytime you need to compute a power. It doesn't input or output with the user, 
but um, it does compute a mathematical function for you. You send in what you want to compute on, it sends out with the return statement. If I didn't have the return statement, then what would happen? Without the return statement, um, you'll get some kind of garbage answer because you didn't send back an answer. You never know what it's going to be. It could be zero, it could be something else. All right, so you have to remember to have the return if you're trying to send back a value. All right, another kind of function would be where you're just um, setting aside some code to keep things organized. Let's pretend that we're doing a higher-lower game. Remember the higher-lower game? You ask, um, the computer tells you it has a random number, and you have to guess. Okay, so what are the main parts of the higher-lower game? Computer says it has a random number, and then the following is repeated. You tell an answer, computer says it's right. Okay, so this thing gets repeated over and over. I could put that up in a function. So I'll say check. Right now I'll just put void. Check. Response. So check. Yes. There's going to be a correct answer, and there's going to be a guess. And remember, it would say if correct equals guess, then they're done. Correct. Else, if correct is less than guess, or say guess is less than correct, see out too low. Else, otherwise, the only other thing that could happen is that they're too high. Okay, so that's something that's going to need to happen over and over again. But we're also need, going to need to get their answer, get their guess. Um, get guess. So what is, if you're just going to say guess an integer. I'm going to see in guess I need to have Through there. Um, there's various ways I could structure this, but one thing I could do is I could say int correct equals pick random. I could put that into a function. Int pick random. Computer says. Um, I am picking a random number. Can you guess it? And then I should pick a random number. Int um, num equals rand mod 100. Return num. And if I'm going to do that, I need to do my normal stuff that I do with rand. Lib.h and that. Okay. So let me what so what I have so far is uh, part of the game is the computer is going to start by picking a random number and telling the user that's in this function. It both does an output and returns the number that it picked. 
There's correct. The other thing that's going to happen is there's going to be get guess. That's going to happen over and over again. And let's say that my get guess will check the answer. Check guess. Check guess needs two parameters. It needs correct and guess. I have guess right there. And how do I get correct? If I'm calling it from down here, I'd have to give it as an input. That's the only way the function would know. So if I'm giving it as an input, I need to say it right here too. Main calls get guess, tells it what the correct answer is, then get guess, has the correct answer, asks the user, gets the guess, and checks the guess. I'm supposed to do guess, get guess for a long time, right? So while something would want to keep doing get guess, as long as they're wrong. Okay, now I'm going to change get guess so it actually returns whether they're correct or not. Return true if they are correct. False otherwise. How do I do that? Well, check guess has that information, but it's not sending it back. I want to modify check guess so it sends the information back. And if it's going to send information back, I have to put a return type here. So this is, I'll make it the same thing. Return true, they are correct. False, otherwise. Alright, take a pause, and what do I need to change in the function so that it does that? Here, I know that they're correct. I should return true. On this one, they're not correct. I should return false. Here on this one, they're not correct. I should return false. Now that that's done, I can do an if test with check guess. If check guess is true, I return true. Otherwise, False. Okay, so the way the get guess works now is you ask for a guess, you call check guess, check guess is going to check it and output to the user and return whether it was true or false, whether it was correct. Check guess tells us it's correct that we pass that information back to whoever called us. And that's in main get guess. So what we really want is to keep asking them. As long as get guess is false. As long as that's true, I'll just put a semicolon. That's an empty statement. It doesn't do anything. Now this is a complete game. I have up in a function to pick the random number and to save that into a variable, and then I repeatedly get a guess. This is maybe easy to read. If you come down to made, you don't have to look at a lot of code. You just have to look at, okay, we're picking a random number, we're getting the guess, as long as it's not correct. The way the while loop is, it keeps going as long as this is true, meaning as long as get guess is false. To figure out if get guess is false, you have to run get guess. You run get guess, you come up here, copy and correct into this correct, ask for an integer, figure out whether this is true or false, and to figure that out you have to run check guess. So we go up to check guess, check guess, the correct and the guess get copied in, does this if test, prints out whatever, and whichever one happens it returns some value. If it was too low it returns false, and then this would mean it's checking is false equal to true. That's false. It would return false. Alright, so this is a more typical use of functions where they're doing something and they're also returning a value. 
it's often that they'll return a status value that says whether they were successful or not. In this case, did the person get the guess right or not? I guess we should run this to make sure it works. Picking a random number, can you guess? 50 is too low, 75 is too high, 62 is too high, 57, okay. Alright, so the things about functions is you need to read this stuff again, read the book again, but the main um, the main thing to remember is the of these four things. Block of code runs all together. Keep things organized. That's the most simple way if you had void and you didn't have any parameters. Then all that's happening is when it gets to the function, it's changing to running up here. When it's done with the function, it remembers where it was and keeps going. The input and output are as ways to communicate with a function. If the function needs some value, you send it in by having a parameter here that gets copied in to the parameter, the variable here. They have to match up. They have to be the same type and they have to be the same number of them. The function can send something back by having a return. And whatever you return has to match up with this type. This last thing to remember is local variables. That is, when you're in a function, you can make your own variables. But any values for those variables, it's just inside your function. Other people can't see them. When I get into the check guess, it doesn't know the value of this variable guess. The only way that it'll know that is if I send that value in as a parameter. All right, so what you want to do is read through the notes again, read the book again. Functions.